Bula Bula. Um, endocrine system. Uh, this is not going to take a long time. Uh, the endocrine system is the second system that you need to know after the nervous system. Um, it's more powerful than the nervous system, worth noting down. And the way the way the best way to think about it is um, the best analogy is weather and climate. Um, weather is more immediate, right? It's more reactive, and that's like the nervous system. Nervous system is very quick it's rapid in terms of response times um but it's not as powerful as the endocrine system in this case climate climate is longer term much more powerful than weather an endocrine system is does take some time to kick in compared to the nervous system but when it does it does tend to be much more powerful so the endocrine system is basically um chemical messenger chemical messengers that go around the body uh we're talking about glands we're talking about hormones uh what is a gland a gland is a small organ around the body you have a number of them situated around the body that secrete chemical messengers known as hormones into the body. Now, in the last video we did, we talked about hormones and neurotransmitters. Uh, sorry, we talked about neurotransmitters. Now I'm talking about hormones. What is the difference? There isn't really, the only difference is where they occur. So a neurotransmitter, a neuro meaning kind of brain, um, et cetera, et cetera, is, it's typically only takes place in the brain, whereas hormones typically tend to take place in the body. They are both chemical messengers. They are both uh, simply carrying messages, um, but where they happen is very different. So let's go into this in a bit more detail then. So as I say, it's probably not gonna take us that long. I'm predicting about a 10 minute video, but we'll see. The endocrine system is a series of bodily organs and pathways that help deliver hormones around the body, right? They use the bloodstream to get round. So basically glands will secrete chemicals into your bloodstream to allow them to get around the body to a certain uh, you know, part of the body. So you know, puberty starts that way, for example. And apparently we have over 50 hormones. You're not expected to know that, uh, all 50. You're not expected to know all 50, but I would know, personally, I would know at least four glands what their functions are, what hormones they release, and the functions of those hormones. So I would know at least four, including the adrenal gland, but we'll go through that in a second. Uh, the endocrine system works alongside the nervous system to control vital functions in the body, but as I say, it does tend to be slower but much more powerful, um, as it says there as well. So, um, as I said, it uses the bloodstream to get around. So one example here is the thyroid. Now, your thyroid is there pretty much, right? It's, at the, it's just under your throat, Adam's apple, should you have one. Uh, uh, quite a malfunctioning little shit is the thyroid. Um, most of the time, if you feel very tired or maybe, maybe if you're putting on a lot of weight um, there's on and so much more, the first thing your doctor will do is a blood test to see if you have an overactive thyroid or an underactive thyroid. Um, if you have a thyroid cancer is quite common and you have to have your thyroid taken out. There's a lot of things that can go wrong here, but when it is working absolutely fine, as it is in most of you, by the way, your thyroid never works better than when you are a teenager. It releases thyroxine and thyroxine has a lot of functions. Now, my advice to you, if you... Um, if you want to find out the functions, just to, just use the internet. Honestly, just use the internet. If I type, if I go onto this and I type in function of uh, thyroxine, it's going to give me a whole load of things that I'm going to be able to write on flashcards. So thyroxine controls how much energy your body uses. For example, if you have an underactive thyroid, you don't release that much thyroxine. 
and therefore you actually put on weight because your your thyroid isn't burning off the energy quick enough. So you're eating the food at a normal pace, but you're burning it off at a slower pace, therefore you put on weight. If you're quite tired, that's a sign that your body is has an overactive thyroid because you're burning through every you're burning through all your energy and that's why you feel so tired for example now this is known as the metabolic rate and at the moment most of you have a good strong metabolic rate it is programmed into your genes for that to slow down now the average time that will slow down which is when people start putting on weight uh, is I'd say the mid to late twenties. Your it's coded into your genetics. Some of it's coded into your genetics now, so some of your me metabolic rate is slowing down. Some of you will be genetically lucky, you little shits, and you will not slow your metabolic rate down until your thirties, forties, maybe even fifties, maybe. But the average time is is mid to late twenties. This happened to me, by the way. My my I used to eat and eat and eat and eat and eat and never put on weight. Uh, and then I'd say around about the age of 27 is when I started to quite noticeably easy, easily put on weight. Teenagers tend to have a sense of invincibility. So a lot of you will think, oh, this won't happen to me. I'm smug in knowing that it will. Um, so other things, it's involved in digestion, how your heart and muscles work, brain development, bone health, for example. So quite important things and this is only one thing so when your thyroid gland does not make enough thyroxine known as hypothyroidism hypo by the way hypo means not enough of hyper means too much of so uh, hypothermia is you have no thermal temperature uh, hyperthermia is you're too hot um, anyway, um, <clears throat> so this would be a good way to actually find out um, uh, the function of various uh, glands. So let's go into a bit more detail. As I said, it releases it into the bloodstream and it can affect any cell in the body that has a receptor for that particular hormone. So, for example, if I, if I, my, uh, no, let's not go there. Um, uh, if my kidneys... Uh, more, sorry, my adrenal gland, which sits on top of the kidneys, releases loads of adrenaline, adrenaline, that's going to affect any cell with an adrenaline receptor in. The major endocrine gland, the big one, the master gland, is the pituitary gland that's in your brain. Uh, this gland controls the release of most hormones around the body. For example, your puberty, your, your puberty, puberty does not start in your testes or your ovaries, starts in your head it's your pituitary that tells your uh, testes or your ovaries to start doing what they were made for right fine um <clears throat> so pituitary is known as the uh, i had a student with a um a big thing that comes out to pituitary by the way and you may want to note this down it's the growth hormone uh it's the growth hormone i had a student many many years ago lovely lovely student actually really really nice quite short very short actually um she if i remember correctly went to the doctor and found a growth a a, a tumor on her pituitary gland that was preventing the release of the growth hormone hence the reason that she was quite small uh, that's quite common by the way apparently the tumors on your pituitary gland so these are all the glands that uh, I, I think are probably quite useful for you to know uh, I'd say you need to know at least four of these the beautiful thing about this in the exam by the way is you shouldn't need to revise it because you can just look at your body and think right where are my glands you're literally carrying your own flashcards with you into the exams but the pituitary is right there quite very very central uh, look at what the pituitary does. The pineal gland, just uh, at the back, slightly uh, well, midbrain, really. The pineal gland releases melatonin. Right, you may want to research what melatonin is. You're going to need to know it in the next couple of weeks. You've got your thyroid just there. We know that releases thyroxine. Your pancreas down here releases insulin. Uh, insulin is involved in the the regulation of sugar. Uh, obviously linked to diabetes uh, the adrenal gland as you can see is just sitting on top of the kidney just there the, that, that top bit the adrenal gland will release uh, adrenaline and noradrenaline as well um, uh, depending on what part of the 
I think it is. Um, ovaries release estrogen. Uh, estrogen is involved in feelings of empathy, uh, so feelings of nurture, for example. Uh, and placenta, obviously, that's, that's releases quite a lot of hormones into the, the baby. Uh, but then you've got your testicles, uh, well, maybe not your testicles, but um, you have testicles, which obviously release testosterone, which is quite heavily linked to uh, anger and aggression. So you would need to know at least four of these and detailed outlines of each of their functions. So there's a couple just here, uh, just as an example. Uh, adrenocortical trophic hormone, for example, is released from the anterior uh, pituitary. So anterior is the front part. Posterior is the back part. Anterior is, your, so this is your anterior body. Uh, so this is the front of your body. Uh, so what is it released in? Uh, stimulating release of glutocorticoids, uh, which is a key component in stress response. So when you are stressed, you have massive hormonal release. Uh, growth hormone is also released from uh, the anterior pituitary, but oxytocin, we love oxytocin, we love oxytocin, is released from the posterior of the pituitary, important in promoting uterine contractions and lactation as well. Uh, I don't really want to go into uterine contractions and where most of those contractions will come from, but needless to say, they're actually linked to pleasure. Uh, uh, so there's, there's a couple of hormones, particularly from the pituitary hormone, that you probably do need to know. And that's it, to be honest with you. Um, I could go into these in a bit more detail, but I do want you to do some research. So like I say, I would recommend knowing, personally, I would recommend knowing four, including the pituitary gland and arguably the adrenal glands. They're the ones you're more likely going to get asked a question about, I would say, uh, but uh, you would need to know at least four of those, uh, what their function, what the general function of the gland is, what hormone they release and also what the function of that hormone is as well as you can see the questions from here so far have not been too bad uh, identify two glands that's easy adrenal gland and testes you literally get two marks for saying that and then outline their functions and then briefly outline one function of the endocrine system overall my advice by the way and this is quite important for a two mark question like this never give one sentence so if you just say one function of the endocrine system is to i don't know is the regulation of hormones around the body that would only get you one mark it, you need a second sentence there you need a little bit more detail um that is it like i said it's a short one um it's pretty basic but what i would say is you do need to know the nervous system very well and the endocrine system very well for what we're looking at next which is the fight or flight. So we're going to look at how those two combine in the fight or flight response. Loose in a bit.